Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Real Talk with Ben podcast, and we are back with part two of our conversation We're with back Daniel. In business. Uh, if you are new, my name is Ben, and this is my podcast where we just talk about everything from life to um, death. Well, that true. And everything uh, in between. Everything in between and just uh, having a good time. So uh, thank you again, Daniel, for taking your time to come talk, uh, even though My pleasure. technically it's the, the same day. But that's fine. You know, it's whatever. We're, we we, we like change? I'm kidding. That no. doesn't work. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, but yeah, so thank you so much for coming back. Uh, I am really loud, and I'm sorry for all you listening. Um, anyways, so... Yeah, we're back to talk again about just life, I guess. But uh, I did want to start out, Daniel. What is, what has been the coolest thing that you have experienced, I guess, when it comes to camp? I know we talked last time about camps. Like, what would you say that when you... Because you started out, obviously, probably volunteering more than anything, and kind of that, that low role. Was it cool, I guess, to... That's kind of where I want to go to the question. Was this cool to kind of go from doing that to last year when you were preaching like is that is that cool for you to kind of like see how god has used you from just volunteering to really sharing the gospel on that stage yeah it cool might not be the best word to use it yeah uh, I'll, my, I'll, I'll say exciting yeah you know because when i came here uh all i did was helping mishi with uh getting ready for the winter camp which i didn't really do much because i've never been in a winter camp before i didn't know what to do i had no idea uh so i was just like there assisting him Mm -hmm. uh and then later that year after the winter camps i just grabbed the camera i started taking pictures just for myself just to uh make pictures of how beautiful this camp is yeah camp castle campus campus is how great the campel is. That's How that's what we're going great today. This campus looks in the winter <laughs> when it's full of snow uh, and stuff. And and you know, then they start, they asked me if I would take pictures for the volunteer training and then for the summer camps and I would be the whole photographer. That's videographer. actually how I first met you. Was yes, doing photos. I was, that's I was how the I photographer met you. for the camp. Uh, that's how, how that I first time. met him. And I did that for two years and then they asked me to help with being the assistant. Uh leader of the guy cam crew the jokers the, yeah it's called the jokers but it's the cam crew <laughs> it's a lot and, <laughs> and i was assisting the the guy leader of the cam crew yeah and then sooner uh a couple of years later i became in charge of the guy count cam crew and then in charge of the camp crew yeah and i started preaching as well so it's been crazy yeah yeah <laughs> uh when i when i came here in 2014 i never would have thought that there's gonna be one day when i'm gonna be standing on a stage in front of 250 people and i'm gonna share share the word of god yeah and and it's crazy too because i think of you know my first year i came i was only a junior in high school you know Mm -hmm. i i was still figuring out my own life and 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 i always and if you remember when i shared my testimony uh, back at the beginning of this podcast way back uh the first episode you know i shared about how much this place kind of helped change me and in the sense that really helped me get to where I am today and um, I think it's funny and and he knows he knows this all the time uh, the amount of years I think I really after I started knowing all you guys I think the last three or four years you guys considerably you guys would always try to convince me to come Yes, you know, and it, it was always a joke. I think at one point, I mean, you guys were serious at the beginning, but I think it goes kind of like a running gag, like, yeah, hey, like you we come start seriously, time. and they're like, nah, he's not gonna come, but we're still gonna joke about it. Like, yeah, you should come. To and the then I remember here. when I messaged you guys because, like, last summer when I was here, that was when I first started thinking about it, and it was yeah. like, okay, I'm graduating, and I was kind of like in that process, as you guys know, and it was funny because. I even remember talking with all of you, and Adam was the only one I think that took me seriously. Not that you guys didn't take me seriously, but it was kind of like we're like, oh, he's oh, just going along it with it because it's because it's. Or you even said it was because like, oh, I was feeling the high of the trip, and and you, I think a lot of you guys, and even Mishi's even said this, of like, we didn't actually think you would come because it was like, oh, he's just going to get back to life and and it's going to be normal. Yeah. But I tell people that when I left, 
was like I was so convicted of like I I was I was at peace here, you know. And I remember when I texted you guys a few months later and like, hey, I'm starting this process. I remember one of your I forget what it was. One of your responses was like, what are have you we serious? Done? Like and like one of you were like, are you serious? Like kind of like, are, are you sure? And like, and I remember when I was coming over here. Um, obviously, I came right before all this coronavirus hit. Yep. When they still blame me for all this, but um. Anyways, I was on my way over and like I was playing to, yeah, uh huh. It was uh, Aaron, one of the uh, interns, was gonna pick me up, you know. And I was playing on that, and I was dead tired because I hate, you know, how much I hate flying. He knows this. I don't like, I don't like any of it. But who I, does? I know. But I, I, I got off the plane and got my bags and everything, and I come around the corner, and all I see is you, Adam, Mishi, Tanner, and uh, Tamash, Dosh. and I was like. What? And I was so confused. But I think it was that moment when I realized, like, God has brought us all a different path. And, like, I'm the same way as you. Like, if you would have told me, you know, six, seven years ago when I first came that, like, in seven years, I would be literally living here for a yep. year and doing ministry alongside my friends and and doing what I love. And I, and I think that's what... I think this coronavirus thing has, has been the hardest on is, is, and I've shared this with you a little bit is like, because it's really easy to focus on, I think what I was wanting to do and having that idea of like, and I think we all have been, but looking at, okay, this is what God has me doing right now. And right now it's, it's being here on the castle, helping the students and stuff like that. Um, but I, I say all that because I think it's really cool how God used all of our stories and like how each of you have been a part of my life. Because if you didn't know, uh, about two years ago, you and Mishi stayed with me um, in in Ohio and, and stayed with my family for a couple weeks. Oh, wage. I owe. That's right. Um, but it was, it was really cool because I had spent so much time with you guys in your country and for you guys to come and, and you know, just to meet people and yeah. how much you love Cedarville and how much they accepted you guys. And, I, and it's still cool because if you look at camp videos for that upcoming summer, some of them are shot in... Uh, in uh, well the the promo videos which they're not actually on YouTube but anyways besides the point, um, but I, I say all that because I think I I hope that people realize that like God doesn't it doesn't go as we always plan you know and He's going to use different things mm-hmm. and I think that's what's so interesting um, and I, I kind of want to shift that into the this question is what what are some of your dreams for your ministry what are, and whether that's still here with Word of Life or if you dream of something doing something more uh, when it comes to sharing the gospel with the youth of Hungary. Right now, my plan is to stay with Word of Life. Uh, I don't see God leading me anywhere else at the moment. Obviously, that could change tomorrow even. Uh, But as for now, I don't see uh, God leading me to go somewhere Mm -hmm. else and do ministry somewhere else. So my plan is to stay with Word of Life as far as what my ministry is going to be, well, the ministry is going to be to share the gospel and disciple young people, whether it's through the Bible school or in the camp or just with being a marketing staff, but still having interaction with the people that's up in the air. Yeah. Uh, but my ministry is always going to be sharing the gospel and discipling young people. Mm. I don't know if if I'm going to stay in the marketing team and the camp team at the same time or if it's going to be just one of them. Who knows? Yeah. I I I really the only thing I want to do is whatever they need me to do. Yeah. So and, and I and I love that attitude. I think um the one thing I love about Daniel is the fact that he's so flexible. Like the fact that you've went I think in the 3 months I've been here, you went from doing you know, some media stuff to, okay, we're getting ready for camp. So you're slowly getting ready for that to all of a sudden going from media to BI, from BI to camp, from camp to media. Uh, oh yeah. By the way, singing on stage for chapels, online chapels. I mean, all these different things. And I think so many people would just kind of hunker down and kind of be like, I can't do this, but like, you don't see that. And I think it's because it's like what you've always told me. Ministry is not always what we want to do it's always what we have to do and how we have to, how what god wants us to do um and i think that's what's so cool and i think i'm really excited to see kind of where i i've always said this about you it's it's you always have those ideas that i look at and i'm like i don't think those are going to work and then they end up working because you just you see it beyond that that extra step and like what do you think for you 
And I know you kind of were thrown into the role of media and stuff like that. But what do you love so much about it? Because I know we could... People probably get annoyed with the amount of stuff we talk about with media, but uh, we love both. Media love is it. my life. <laughs> yeah, we both we both love it so much, and obviously we we talk cameras and stuff all yeah. the time. What would you say is like what draws you to that? Is it the creativity side of it? Is it just being able to tell stories? Or Canon. Well, Canon. Yeah, that's true. We both <laughs> no, love Canon, and he's jealous because I have Canon and he has Nikon. But anyways, that's beside the point. But so, what is it? Is it telling the story, or is it creativity, or is it, or is it a combination of both? It's a combination of both. And just, yeah, telling the story. Because, for example, when we do a recap video for the camp, which I'm not doing anymore because uh, there are other really talented people who can do it for me and, and I can focus which on Which are things. really good. If you wa- yeah. watch some from last summer, very good, very well done. But yeah, so the, the, the purpose with those videos or when I do a promotional video for a local church ministries project for public ministry or school evangelism. It's always to tell a story and to to pass on a feeling. You know, so when, when there's gonna be a, a random kid searching online for best summer camp in the world, uh well in Hungary. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> and they see our video and he has never heard about World of Life. It's awesome. It's gonna be like wow. If if the video like the video is, is gonna show him a feeling it's going to show him what it feels like to be a part of our camp and and if that's going to be if that's going to make him be like wow i want to go to this camp mm. and and yeah. eventually he's going to come and he's going to share hear the word of god and then he can make a decision whether or not he accepts it but the same with with uh any other video i want to pass on a feeling to the viewers so they know what it's like to be a part of mm. the ministry here to be a part of our camp to be a part of our bible school yeah to attend a conference that we are doing or, or anything like that yeah and, and we we talked about it actually we're, we're recording this uh the week before on friday and we, we had dinner together and we were talking about the idea of of allowing someone to feel and not feel ambushed yes um and the difference of that and i think that's something that you try to do you know you don't want to overwhelm them I mean there's certain things like camp videos that are yes. more fun obviously when camp is, is something exciting, exciting and energetic you, want to. Yeah, you yeah. want to make the promotion energetic yeah it's not like somber and sad yeah yeah. but so when welcome, it comes to welcome to camp yeah this is the world of this is summer camp this is you're gonna enjoy this yeah. no you, you want know? it to make it exciting you want to make yes. it vibrant but there are parts of our ministry there are things that we do that are more calm slower uh, which like the bible school it's not that like we go all in and it's just one week of really uh, enthusiastic. It's a whole and, year. Um, yeah, it's a whole year of, of studying the Word of God, which obviously is a lot more slow and, and uh, steady. Steady, yeah, yeah. Than, than the summer camps. So in one way, you want to promote that in a similar way. Or when, when we are inviting guest groups to come here, when there's a, a group of, of uh, elderly people and they see a, a really fast-paced video of cool visual yeah, effects and, and transitions. They're like, <laughs> they I don't think this is a place for us. You don't want to get any back, back pain today. Yeah, yeah. But you have to figure out who your audience is. And yeah. you're going to have to make the promotion in uh, in line with that. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, and I, I like that, what you said. And, and that kind of leads me into another kind of topic that, you know, we mentioned last time, and I think we've, we've talked about, we've talked about off air, I, I think a ton. Um, but one thing I know that we both have talked about is is what the future of media looks like at World Life Hungry. Um, we both know it's hard sometimes to, and again, that's why I love having the perk of that I run my own. Anyways, that's besides the point. But... I know there's, you know, dream equipment you would like, and, and there's things like that. What, what would you say right now is like if someone's watching this and or or listening, um, and they're like, you know, I really want to help out the ministry. What are some of the things that you know you need? And I know we've talked about this. Things that you need that you know, not only would make the ministry better, but would also make you guys more efficient. Um, because trust me, I've seen their setup they use now, um, and. There's many times where I just want to offer like help because you know those yeah. things. Well, one thing, just to make sure that everybody knows, Word of Life is not limiting. Yeah. Our absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Multimedia and marketing uh, work. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, right now because of the pandemic mm-hmm. and the financial situation, you can't do as much. Everything is like yeah. 
the budget is lower than yeah. it should be, obviously, uh, which is fine. It's a temporary yeah. uh, state, and we, we all uh, and everyone's affected all over the world. So it's not yeah, just yeah. it's not just here. Yeah, but one thing I I always say when it comes to investing into multimedia is that it's you know you don't have to if you have the camera that we use right now you can make really good videos mm -hmm. with that is the it's only not about the tools it's the only difference is how much work you have to put it after recording yes is the pr uh, post production mm -hmm. that is going to take longer because just so you know it does not take a day to put videos together yes falsely um, yeah. false fact <laughs> so if i record with this camera which is a good quality yeah, camera for a, especially for a starter yeah. after I put the video in the timeline. I don't have to do that a much, lot, yeah. uh, you know, color grading or or working with the audio or like, and yeah, I don't have to work that much with it. But if you have a, a worse quality, yeah, or you like can an older, still, older version, or older yeah. version, yeah, you can still make really good quality. It just takes more with time. That camera. It's just you have to know how to do that, and yeah. it takes more time, obviously. So that's that's kind of my problem right now because I can still make good quality videos. It's just sometimes, and, and you're doing a lot of videos right now, yeah. anyways. Besides just the videos you want to do, it's just sometimes I really don't have the time and the, yeah. the capacity to work that much more on a video, just to make it look more appealing and yeah. more professional. Uh, but basically, the the dream setup that we would have is to have our own studio. Right mm. now, like we are recording <laughs> Don't wherever we, all. we can. You <laughs> know, we all. Uh, like, look at this. We're in a room right now. This yeah. we, for the podcast, for example, we found an empty office that is quiet. There's no echo, so we can do the do the podcast you mean it's right now. Than that first episode when it was very echoey. What? It got better after the first episode. Yeah. It was really yeah, echoey. Yeah. It was very echoey the first episode. Yeah, but the goal would be to have our own studio setup where we could have everything fixed audio and, and yeah, video audio, and stuff. Uh, yeah. lights uh, cameras everything yeah. and it's not like oh now we're recording here so we're gonna bring everything and that's here. obviously not a right now it's like we said like your hopes and your dreams yeah yeah um but i think people could even help out um and, and this is something that i always tell people when and you guys have seen this too is whenever you want to help out a ministry that doesn't have to be brand new stuff um I think a lot of time we've talked about this. Sometimes things that you might think are old, to be honest, might be brand spanking new for a ministry yeah. that they never thought they would ever be able to have. So I, I think that's what I, I think it would be encouragement to you. And I think what you could share is just like, hey, these are some things that we would like to have that it, it's would help our ministry in yeah. that sense. Yeah. So maybe maybe you have a, a camera and you're like, oh, I've had this for three years now. And and it's I got like a new one or something like yeah, that. I got a new one or I'm really not using it. Who knows? It might be a lot better than what we use now, and it could be used for the glory of God in like an day to day and basis. And you know it's going to be used for that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, or or like a, a good tripod or good, good lights, microphones, my, light, lights, yes, and everything like that. Uh, because I and I think editing computer. Yeah, you and know? that's the thing is is like. You you want to make it like you said when you're doing media and and you want to do it. You know, like when I'm doing stuff on my own, it's easy to just do because I, I can do what I want. But for you guys, like you're doing so much and I think it helps when you can make it your job easier. Yeah. When you can make the lighting better so that way you have – you don't have to color grade as much or uh, a better audio to do that or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's what's what's interesting. And like, So I, I just – you know, I wanted to ask him these questions because I, I want you to consider, you know, how could you maybe help – you know, we're life, not even just, maybe it's even more stuff like that. Maybe it's some tools for maintenance or maybe it's, it, and it's, I want to point that out because I think every ministry needs things, you know, for, I know for LCM that in where I'm working, you know, we need, you know, teaching equipment, we need stuff like that. And those little things that maybe you can uh, spare, you know, $20, $25 and go out, buy some stuff and, and, and be able to send it or whatever. Um, but I think that's what's so cool, and I think, and, and that's what I would encourage. And I think that's what you would encourage mm -hmm. too. It's just whatever can help, and and as yeah. as a ministry itself, yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, and that's that's kind of like what um, I, I think I really wanted to focus on today. And, and I think a second aspect of that is this: you know, how would you say, um, as a ministry, um, as a camp ministry specifically, um, what do you say the the hardest part about this coronavirus has hit? you guys as a team um i know it's hit our you know lcm pretty hard too but uh and everyone's been hit hard but for you guys specifically i know it's it's been kind of tough i've kind of seen it i've kind of just heard it it's it's not easy for you guys um what's been what's been the hardest part 
<laughs> figuring out what to do. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. right now, no one knows anything. Hungary is changing guidelines as we're doing this, but it's not a yeah. ton. Yeah. Uh, so Unfortunately. This, this is going to come out next Thursday, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when you're listening to it or when you're watching this, yesterday the government already made some decisions and some guidelines so about we summer camps so we won't have an update for you on this yeah but. so pretty much what i'm saying now is not going to be applicable when you're listening to i it. might put in the description because i edit these on either wednesday or thursday morning or wednesday night and thursday morning so yeah. i might put it in description so stay tuned for that and i'll might put it in the description what's yeah so on? so basically right now since we don't know what's going to happen we have <laughs> plan, plan, plan a, 30 b c d e f <laughs> e plus like, five <laughs> yeah you know you have to be prepared for everything because who knows maybe the government is going to say that you're not allowed to do any camps yeah. locally here and we want to make sure that when the government says that, we're like, okay, we have a plan for that because mm-hmm. we know that we can do camps online, <laughs> uh, like virtually, that we are planning at the moment to have like as a Which plan really B or as an extra to something. Be honest, because it's funny when I like talk with like, so we're working out in the, and you guys have seen the videos of us working. And most of the time it's just talking like we were doing that one day because there's literally nothing else to do. Like literally you're just chopping wood and then just talking. And I remember with Tanner on, on uh, last week he was just he was like going through all the plans or like the ideas and I'm going I am so lost but it's so true like you have to have yeah. plan 27 because 29 yeah. of them you know 26 of them didn't work because yeah maybe the government is going to say oh you can have camps but, but only, only 50 people. only 50 campers can be here <laughs> or only 25 campers can be there only or, or 100 and hunger, can be and there a, and we want to point out Hungary's done a great job I yes. mean the amount of effort they've done um Speaking of my own home country, not trying to bash my home country, but they've done it. Hungary's done a very much much better job than I think most countries of saying, "Hey, look, we're going to do this more severe because we want to at least cut it down." And look, now we're able to yes. do more. We're able to start going back to life a little bit, yeah. which makes it easier. And yeah, the European Union is bashing on us for sure, but I, I but are I you agree. Pr- yes. There's no problems, you know, and it, well, there is, but it's not like dramatic you yes. know dramatic side yes. of things um, but yeah and I, and I do agree with you when it, when you need those extra plans and things like that um, and, and I want to kind of finish up this episode um, as we're getting close to the end I want to I want to focus on your mission ministry personally um, what are some what are three prayer requests that um, that people can be praying for you if they're listening to this um, that they might be able to either help out or just be praying and, and hopefully help you out in that way three prayer requests uh, well, one of them is not really personal, but uh, for the camps, uh, that God would give us wisdom as we are, you know, trying to figure out what we're gonna do, uh, with regarding the the volunteers, who we would have as volunteers, and and how we're gonna disciple them while they're here, or if we cannot have camps here, how are we gonna disciple people online, uh, for this whole season, and yeah, just just camp ministries in general, uh. Either way, we are going to share the gospel mm. somehow. Amen. Here, online, both. I don't know. Heck, I might be we, coach. I might be coaching four different sports. Who, who knows? knows? Yeah, but one thing <laughs> for sure is we want and we Amen. will share the word of Amen. God. Uh, ju- but still, that God will give us wisdom how we can do it best. And I'll put uh, these on the, if you're watching on the screen below so you can see. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, camps, camps would be number one. Uh, second one. Many people say that they have a lot more free time uh, because of this <laughs> virus. This guy does not. I have less free time now. <laughs> he has uh, like no free time. Because as everything is moving online, I'm the person who does all of that. <laughs> Didn't you get kicked off from YouTube for a day? I did. <laughs> I uploaded way too many things to YouTube. Online oh, classes for gosh. the Bible school, so they banned me for a day. Uh, but yeah, just that God will give me strength in, and, and rest and, and rest. Yeah. In, in all and, this and when he has days off to take days off, unfortunately, yes. he tends to want to do things and not take days off. <laughs> yeah. He's opposite of his roommate, which will, who will not be named during this episode <laughs> that tends to be more yeah. on the chill side. Yeah. But yeah, just for, for rest and, and enough energy to be able to do it. And even though I'm, most of the time I'm really tired, but I will still be able to do everything with excellence. Yeah. Awesome. Because I know that what I'm doing, whether it's classes online or chapel recordings or anything, I want to do it for the glory of God. Amen. Not because I have nothing else to do or anything, but yeah, I want God, God to be glorified. And for that, I want it to be 
be perfect. Not perfect, obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but I want it to be good quality, which I cannot do if I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And for the third. Uh, Sorry, you have a bug on your mic. Oh, that's fine. There you go. I'm bugged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would only happen with us. Someone's anyway, listening to us. Yeah, who is it? <laughs> Government. Uh, yeah, yeah. Third, for the third, uh, the uh, connecting back to my previous one, uh, because of the lack of too much free time, um, I don't want my relationship with God to be sidelined or or pushed mm. down from the first priority of my day. Uh, so you can pray for that, that I would still be able to continue to focus on God, read his word every day and, and just have a, a daily relationship with him. Mm. Yeah. And, um, yeah, keep, if you guys keep those in your prayer, um, and I know specifically, I know that during this time he, he's probably going to hate me that I bring this up, but also, you know, I'm going to leave, uh, below just his, um, you know, his Instagram and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> just so you guys, if you guys want to contact him, if you just want to like send him a message and just say, Hey, praying for you, whatever. Um, but also if you, if you want to you know, support him as a minis- missionary or you want to, you know, learn more information, um, uh, I'll leave stuff below just to, so you can, you know, maybe contact him and just be able to share things. But I, I do want to say that, um, you know, what Daniel do, Daniel does, Daniel do, Daniel does, he, he's not the only one here. There, there are so many other missionaries here that, um, that are doing what they love in a very tough time. Um, you know, part of my, my goal of being here and I've shared with this, with, uh, some missionaries here is I'm here for a year. Um, yeah, I'm here to do ministry. Yeah. I'm here to, you know, help in whatever way possible, but also my ultimate goal is to be able to share stories like this, um, to be able to share stories of what they love to do. And, and, you know, because I feel sometimes we, we lose track, we lose track of the idea that there are people all over this world sharing the gospel and doing it not because they have to, but because they want to and because they know that's what God asks of them. Um, and so I, I hope that you've taken, you know, these two episodes um, that we've been able to have, you know, this this these past few days and and just and just process and seeing and hearing his story, but realizing it's not his story. It's God's story. It's, it's what God's done yeah. through the ministry, through what you love to do. And I think maybe that's one thing you can say is, is you know, you love what you do and God's using it. And um, I, I would ask you to say one thing is if there's someone that's interested in doing ministry, what is the one piece of advice you can give them in saying, um, yeah, what is that one piece of Go. advice? Go and do it. Yeah. If you're interested in ministry, don't wait. Don't hesitate. Yeah. And, and I tell people all the time, I waited too long. And, yeah. and he, he can admit to that. Like he knows, he knows my fire for coming here. I mean, he knows what my dad's fire is. Um, I love this place. And I said that a couple times, but I probably should say it more. Like this place is, it's, God is doing some amazing things here. And uh, it's partly because of people like Daniel and, and Mishi and Adam and Alex and all these people that are here just doing what they love and sharing the gospel. And so once again, Daniel, I want to thank you so much. Thank you for being a good friend, uh, but My better, pleasure. Uh, better um, brother in Christ, and and I appreciate that. And also, if you've loved these episodes and you want to hear more interviews, let me know in the comments. I would love to do some more interviews, just talking with people. Also, if you want to uh, stay in tune, stay tuned in to what's going on uh, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. I come out every Tuesday and Thursday, so go ahead and you know favorite it. It'll come out, um, and then on YouTube, member. Like it, subscribe it, hit that notification bell. Hit that bell. Yeah, and it will come out uh, whenever it, whenever it comes out. You know, it will pop up in your notification. So that's awesome. But anyways, thank you so much, and I want to remind you. you as always, God is faithful, and you can trust Him. And we'll talk next time. <laughs>